Over 1000 horsepower in one video, the premium sedans comparison test Audi S4 versus BMW M3 Body I versus Mercedes C43. This is Thomas with Audigo Fuel in 4K full screen full length. Let's go with the Audi single frame grille, black styling. You can also get black Audi rings and this Ur Quattro citation from the first Quattro model actually. Here then the matrix LED lamps with a beautiful turning indicator also in a cascading style and more black accentuations in the lower part. This color is called Ascari Blue. The BMW styling actually, I think styling wise, it just looks most screaming out in a way here, especially with the M Sport Package Pro, where you can also get this dark frame around the double kidney. The standard M340i would also come with like gray accentuations. And here the C43, vertical fins in the special AMG front grille, which also is wider in the lower part than in the top part. This color here is called Hyacinth Red. Yeah, it's a little bit strange because in the configurator you only find the Patagonia, but you can also go for custom orders. And here the lamps, also with a very interesting daytime running light. The turning indicator not as spectacular right here. This is also the digital light, also with adaptive high beam function and so on. Which one do you find best from the front styling? Tell me in the comments. <laughs> With 4 meter 71 or 185 inches, the BMW is, so to speak, the smallest. But it's actually not a huge difference to the other size figures for the Mercedes and the Audi. Big difference is also will have an effect on driving. We have 18 inch wheels for the BMW and the Audi. Of course, can get bigger ones and 19 inch wheels today for the Mercedes. The Mercedes in the side profile has the most aggressive look, the sportiest look. The BMW, something in between, and the Audi clear the most conservative, most subtle look on the exterior. As for the rear, super interesting how they differ right here. They all employ this separate contrasting spoiler right here. The Audi once again with the most conservative look and also, let's say, not screaming out too much. The BMW, I think, most consistent. Oh, another guest for today. <laughs> here, I think very beautiful with the three-dimensional tail lamps. And the Mercedes is the most screaming out one, but they all employ fake exhaust. Worst with the Audi, of course, than in the EU diesel trim. It is better than in the petrol trim with the Audi, of course, where you have real exhaust. And here with the BMW, something in between because you have this outer tip. And with the Mercedes, these are not the real pipes. The real one is also on the inside. Key fob comparison, Audi, BMW, Mercedes. They all have something. The Mercedes one is the most elaborated one in a way, also the heaviest one, but then it's also thickest in the pocket, actually. The BMW here, the slimmest one. Hmm, which one is your favorite? BMW seating position, a lot of headroom left, definitely, also for tall people. The steering wheel here also with the menu control, also very smooth indeed. The seats, so far, so good. I think for tall people, the ergonomics could be a little bit better. I think that Volvo still does it best as for the seat ergonomics, but I also feel that the Audi seat is especially a little bit more comfortable than this one here. This one here, the animal skin spec. However, BMW is best in offering perforated sensor tech, the animal free material in all markets. Since the 3 Series facelift, BMW presents us a mix of analog and digital. This new curved screen, two screens then in one unit, but then you still have a manual volume knob. And also here in the lower part, this control knob right there that you can also control the infotainment system while driving. I really appreciate to have that. The infotainment system itself is actually quite quick indeed. Also has a useful car internal GPS and the Apple CarPlay integration is really, really large. Definitely you see here this horizontal focus, whereas Mercedes goes with the vertical focus. Just here the AC unit, it went into the screen with the facelift that is easier to access with the Audi. Also when you want to activate the seat heating or so, because you always have to go into the menu or use the voice control. Instruments come alive like this, and then you can also switch here to different layouts. Um, this is a more, let's say, modern digital approach, whereas Audi, for example, also has an 
analog digital look do you know what i mean so which one would you prefer and i don't know about you but here this new shifting lever i think a bmw needs a proper shifting stick and not this you know yes clean solution but it's just tiny mercedes door closing sound also very good you see a lot of high gloss piano lacquer is being used so it looks quite cool but when you then look in detail Mm, the other ones look more elaborated. This is the AMG Performance seat. Stiffer, slimmer and also more bolstering. You can also get the normal sport seat, which would be standard. In Germany, we can also get Dynamica microfiber on the inside. Not possible in the UK and not certain yet in the US. Seating is not too uncomfortable, although this is quite stiff from the bolstering. More comfort than in a normal comfort seat. But here also I think that the seating comfort is best with the Audi. Steering is actually quite cool here with the microfiber and also the two horizontal spokes. But then again also hashtag capacitive BS at the steering wheel. Interior over here with the Mercedes most screaming out also here from the design. Vertical layout, big difference to the other ones. And here in the C43 we also have this carbon fiber decor right here. The air vents are also really screaming out nice ambient lighting integration at night. However, and the steering wheel, once again, this has a good size and also nice shifting pedals. Well, there's such a huge difference between the Audi, which is most subtle, most conservative, and the Mercedes, which has like elements here, 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 everywhere. What I found very cool is that with the Mercedes, you can drive and also select then the driving modes at the steering wheel directly that's the easiest here in the test and you can also see the driving modes changing in the infotainment system but also can individually just set a specific setting here in these special amg gauges and the rest of the infotainment system it's actually pretty quick and also here the car internal gps for example the apple carplay integration looks like this also really large indeed you can very well work with that and also like any bmw temperature unit in the screen always stays at this point but still that is best in the audi where you still have the physical input oh and have you seen the air vents like the middle controls they are now all straight in this vehicle unlike in models before probably they have fix that digital instruments very versatile you can pick completely different stylings for example here understated look also map look or assistance systems and so on how you want to drive and for the amg you also have special sport gauges like sport or super sport no super sport yeah that's about controlling it with the capacitive bs buttons and also track pace and you also have a lot of storage here in the front cup holders also adaptive to USB-C chargers and in the middle armrest more. Front seating here with the Audi, comfortable and balanced and also the steering wheel position here, manual start up and down and out but really smooth indeed. So this is here already seating wise a good balance between sportiness and comfort and headroom is plenty left even with 189 or 6 for 2. And the Audi seats here with Alcantara on the middle part and integrated head restraint looks quite cool especially this alcantara pattern doesn't it interior overview in the audi s4 clean straightforward rather conservative nice brushed aluminum and here this tablet or the screen is basically attached this is the facelift model digital instruments clear to read i think the best digital instruments here in this test you can also change the view and of course this lovely climate unit right here it's so great has this really beautiful clicking sound this is the best straightforward user interface also here with with the toggle wheels on the steering wheel so yes it looks most old school but it's also easiest to control seating here in the bmw already closed when i'm driving here in the front this recess here at the back part of the seat that would work better when i put the seat a little bit higher then it would actually work headroom yeah gets close but it's also fine for my size one minus 89 or six foot two a little bit narrow here for the shoulder area that's quite typical for bmw sedans overall also good build quality here for the rear doors there is one advantage to the performance seat it gives you a little bit more legroom but 
also in all three vehicles you hardly have any knee room when a tall driver is driving and headroom is also comparable you can always basically put a hand over your head so there not much difference uh, it's very comparable with the BMW. I think just from the basic architecture, the Audi offers a little bit more space here to the side, but not more legroom. This one here actually, with the performance seat, best legroom. <laughs> Seating in the rear with the Audi, headroom is fine, but these sport seats with the integrated head restraint, they really restrict the legroom. It's better with the normal A4 with a separate head restraint, but here it's really, really close. Just cool, inside of the door, the Alcantara and also here on the seats again. The BMW trunk is with 500 liters on paper the largest but here we have a lot of liters here and on the other side but then again it's a little bit narrow here between the wheel arches but it's actually quite high. 455 liters for the Mercedes trunk also same length approximately and the same width between the wheel arches I think here this plastic part here should not be there in this vehicle but also very well usable like the others and you can that's the biggest advantage fold the seats very very easily from here with another help and there you can load things through and the Audi at 460 liters, but I feel this one here has the best square dimensions. So they're all a meter of 40 inches in length or in width approximately. But this one, I think among the best usable. The acceleration figure to one kilometers or 62 miles now is with all of them around four and a half seconds, but they reach it with a different way. Here, the Mercedes goes four cylinder now, really? Here you can see the stability on the strut bar or dome strut. One, two, three, four. Hmm, for a C43, I doubt that's the right decision. However, performance wise, it's all the way there. It even has the biggest horsepower output with this mild hybrid system of over 400 horsepower. The BMW, classic, the three liter inline six cylinder, probably to me the best engine in the test. I can already tell that so far. And around 370 horsepower, and it is the quickest because there's like a 0.2 second difference than where this one is actually quicker and we we'll also soon go to the German Autobahn, launch it all the way out and see how is the acceleration in the higher uh, speed, like 80 to 180 kilometers an hour or something like that. This will be very, very interesting. The Audi is a little bit special. In Europe, you get the 3 liter six cylinder diesel. In the US, you get the 3 liter six cylinder petrol engine. We'll also test drive both for you today that you can actually compare them. So in Europe, I have to say the diesel fought a little bit out of the spec. However, for the driving performance and the behavior of the vehicle, it doesn't change much because it is still a rear wheel biased all wheel drive. They all come with all wheel drive. You can also get the BMW in the US with rear wheel drive only. The Audi and the Mercedes always then with all wheel drive. The petrol engine, of course, in the US for the Audi is a little bit better as for the sound and also from the low torque area and so on. Welcome to Tunis' Comparison Driving Lounge, starting with the M340i, putting in Sport Plus one, and also in the S-Shifting mode. And we'll get on to the German Autobahn for the first acceleration. Let's go. Plop, that was like 40 to 180 kilometers an hour. Wow. That was impressive indeed. Whew, this engine is so engaging. And if you compare the three series, two liter four cylinder versus the three liter inline six cylinder here, it adds so much to this vehicle here indeed. Wow, this is a huge difference. Recently we had our test of the more civilized versions of these three vehicles here. And this time, yeah, it is just the most engaging engine. The Audi 3 liter V6 you can get in the North American market for uh, for the S4. There's also a great engine, definitely. This one here just, you know, so emotional. At the same time, it can also be very calm. We just go comfort mode and de-driving mode. That's actually really, really, really calm. And you can score great consumption figures even when you're going like Cruise control, 100 kilometers an hour, 120 kilometers an hour, like 60, 70 miles an hour. This 3 liter inline six cylinder is more fuel saving than the 2 liter four cylinder. You can score better consumption figures indeed. 
it's quite astonishing, you know, because you can always keep it at a lower RPM and so on. It's not, you know, working so much. Of course, when you race it all the way through, use all of that horsepower, then of course the consumption will go up. But actually, it can also be quite economic. Well, not that great, but in comparison to the 2 liter four cylinder, it's not worse at all. In most cases, even better. That's really interesting thing. Let's go back in the Sport Plus mode and also in the S shifting mode. Here it's basically split with the Audi, for example. It is always also connected um, and with the Mercedes as well. Here with the BMW, you basically have the Sport setting here for, uh, for, for suspension and so on, throttle input and for the steering that you have a little bit more feedback. By the way, really nice with this transition, a lot of fun. And then you have to go for the shifting also in that S mode so that the RPMs are turned up higher and so on. So this split here, I'm not really sure why they're doing that. It's, I think it's too complicated. If you would go to the sport mode, I think you would also want sporty shifting directly, right? Oh, listen to that. <laughs> That's 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour. Yeah, this engine is so much fun indeed. Wind noise at higher speed, I feel, is better, especially with the Mercedes. Actually, when we're really, really fast here now. Um, yeah, and also when we are driving a little bit faster, I feel that I don't have the best control of the steering. Um, it's not that predictable, I would say, because here they made it that running straight is a little bit calmer basically you know what i mean so here it doesn't do too much and then when you get to this area then it suddenly does more you know and that is not that predictable uh, li like the other steerings yeah but the engine of course there's even still an artificial sound here because everything is well insulated and so on and you also get artificial boost in here they change here a lot of fun wow really nice Adaptive suspension we have also as an option built in here. Even in the sport mode, it is quite comfortable with 18 inch wheels. Now we go to the comfort mode, then it's also a little bit more comfortable overall. And I think also when there are some, some bumps in the road, they don't get through to your lower back and so on. So here I found with the BMW, when you go for the adaptive suspension, you already add some more comfort. And then it's really about the wheel choice. So I had some rides with 19 inch wheels, where I would say, hmm, maybe it's too rough in a way, but here with 18 inch wheels and the winter tires is actually quite fine. And I think they didn't, let's say they didn't exaggerate anything with this vehicle here and also with the suspension setup. So if you want like the super, super, super aggressive thing, you would of course go for the M3. Here the M340i still presents a balance that you want to have this car in everyday driving. Oh, also when you go off the throttle, ah, not sure how you can pick it up on camera, but going throttle and leave it, even it, blop, 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 you got these exhaust notes there. Ah, it's just lovely indeed. So indeed, the 340i here, the thing that this one here does especially well is giving you so much emotion and that is definitely connected to the engine. And now the Mercedes, let's go to the Sports Plus mode and accelerate it out. Let's go. That's 190 kilometers an hour. That went also very quick indeed. So pure performance wise, you are not missing the six cylinder. The sound we're hearing is of course emulated. It's not that it would not be emulated in the six cylinders, but here is just, let's say more emulation. So um, yeah, the, the, the big question is here, is it worse when you know it's fake? Yeah, <laughs> that might be also a question for other fields of life. <laughs> mm. 
well. I mean, it doesn't sound too bad, actually. And also, when you go off the throttle, you also have some blop, blop, blop from the exhaust. It does feel cool and it does feel sporty. That's, that's true. Steering here, on the side, we have the microfiber one, and it's actually very well to control. Lane changes are also a lot of fun. Yeah, this one feels way different than the normal C-Class indeed. So, I said with the BMW, it makes it basically a different vehicle, mainly due to the engine. Here in the Mercedes, if you compare the Mercedes C-Class and the AMG C-Class, it makes it really a very different vehicle, not only from the engine. Yeah, we still have the four-cylinder here, but suspension-wise, it's way stiffer. The steering also feels a little bit more engaging. Of course, you also have this AMG styling. Yeah, the whole car feels more like, let's go attack it and so on. This is very interesting. Whereas with the Audi, there is not that large difference between a normal A4 and the S4. Yeah, and in power-wise, of course, yes. But that's why the A4 is always some kind of this compromised balance between comfort and sportiness. And with Mercedes here, you feel the biggest gap between the normal version and the AMG version. That has always been the case. It's very interesting. Whereas with Audi, the, trans the, the, like the transition between the different models in the lineup is really smooth always. With BMW, a little bit more gap. And with Mercedes, there's the biggest gap then between the normal and the AMG one. This is a very interesting finding here, definitely. It is also very engaging to drive. As for how natural the steering feels, well, it's super astonishing that when you compare the previous generation C-Class, that this is here now definitely more direct. This is actually very cool. I like that sporty feature that the steering is just sportier overall. However, the most natural feeling in the comfort mode, it's really, really light. When we are in the sports mode, sport and plus, sport plus, I have a little bit more resistance. There's also an individual mode. You can also set up then, for example, that you make the steering itself just, um, you know, a little bit harder in the reaction. That's also fine. But I think the most natural feeling is still delivered by the Audi, steering feeling-wise. So by the steering, you feel most connected to the Audi. That's the thing. Other than that, suspension-wise and also how the car behaves, you also feel really connected here with the C43. So let's go to the next autobahn here, another acceleration. Just have to see that no one is behind us. Let's see, and we can hit once again, let's go. is really rough in here. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, this is actually the roughest suspension in the test. I've been wondering about that. Interesting. So, really less compromise. So, whereas the Audi has biggest compromise, sportiness and comfort and balance, BMW then more in the sporty direction. And here, yeah, the Mercedes feels kind of sportiest. Also here, lane change at higher speeds. Well done. It's actually also reasonably silent in here as for the wind noise. So good noise insulation in the C-Class. Also a lot of fun. So I have to say, fun-wise, you don't miss the six-cylinder. I still think a car in that size in this segment with that Sporty Pro should have a six-cylinder. Even if it's just because. Sometimes because is also important, you know. But from the performance, that's actually fine, you know. The only thing you don't get, yes, you get this sound emulation. What you hear from your ear, yes, that works. However, these low frequency vibrations that also account for this gut feeling from a six cylinder. This is done then in the BMW and in the Audi when you have the V6 petrol. The S4 diesel, nah, although it's a good engine. And here in the four-cylinder Mercedes C43, you don't get this gut feeling vibration, you know? And I want to have that in a sporty vehicle. But besides that, 
it's also an awesome driving experience here. Now, here once again now getting off the motorway. Wow, it's a lot of fun. How quick it can be in the corner. Yeah, that's amazing. Also super engaging. Yeah, sound wise it's actually quite cool and just from you know what you hear again. Wow. And I was at first very sure that the three series would be like the most sporty, most fun, most engaging. But the C43 is really challenging that, so that is astonishing. I mean, also, of course, the, the overdrive has a rear wheel bias. It's so much fun here also to move it around. Wow. What about the Audi? That's 180 kilometers an hour, really strong. Of course, here in the European version, this is the 3 liter diesel. However, the acceleration figure is kind of the same. There's just a difference that when you have that diesel, the torque is setting in later. And then on the Autobahn, when you're already at speed and using that torque, then it's really strong, gives you good punch as well. The TSI, which you also get in the US, or then in the um, S5, convertible you can still get it for example in uh, in Europe that one is actually a little bit more instant torque instant speed at lower speeds out oh, directly when you hit the, the pedal here with the diesel you have to wait like this second and then it pushes massively but what they have both in common and this will also not change anything else about this review both have the standard quattro 40 60 distribution so you always have a rear wheel bias indeed and of course, also suspension and so on and handling is the same. And here on the German Autobahn, once again, it really feels at home, so settled indeed. We have the adaptive suspension in here, I'm in dynamic mode, then I have a little bit more feedback from the road, but I can also go, for example, to the comfort mode. Then it dampens a little bit softer. It's actually very good in both cases. And that's the thing about the S models in, at Audi. They are always setting a tone on the perfect balance, actually. They don't want to go too much into the sporty direction. They really want to give you the perfect balance between sportiness and comfort. And that's what I love here also about the Audi S4 indeed. Also in combination with the seats, for example, I think the Audi here has the best long-term comfort, is, so to speak, the most relaxed vehicle of the three um, here. And also when I take the Alfa Giulia into account, still accounts for that the Audi is the most relaxed vehicle without being, you know, so much less sporty or so much less instantaneous from the acceleration and so on. Also here with the steering, really precise, very progressive, finest input and you don't feel any dead zone area. I also think the steering input is among the best with the Audi. Mercedes improved that massively now here with the new C-Class generation. So before they were a little bit off as for the sporty character of the steering. Now definitely more comparable, but Audi, the Audi steering here is still so likable both in parking in and out and also when you handle a little bit sportier, like here now. This is a transition between two Autobahn. <laughs> uh, this is actually most fun to me. So some people say, wow, look at that here. Hardly have to use the steering wheel. I mean, really progressive, very nice. So some people say um, throttling it out on the Autobahn is most fun. I always say these transitions between two Autobahn, this is actually to me the most fun. By the way, one Autobahn, two Autobahnen, that would be like, you know, like the correct German thing. The plural of Autobahn is an Autobahnen, not Autobahns, like the English plural. So, eine Autobahn, zwei Autobahnen. Listen and repeat. Eine Autobahn, zwei Autobahn. Like one Autobahn, two Autobahn. <laughs> so, and here, the next Autobahn. Wow, really good punch, good control and You've really maybe seen 
I don't have to do much work on the steering wheel and how precise and calm the car is handling. That's really what I love about this vehicle and you feel sport and comfort at the same time. I can't stress it enough that this is the special thing about this vehicle and of course the straight user interface while driving, click click, it just gives you this more perceived premium feeling when it's so easy to change the temperature and you also hear this clicking sound while driving while changing the temperature good and clear and easy digital instruments so this on the one hand old school atmosphere in this vehicle maybe is so straightforward and to me still of the three the best user interface while driving and this has a direct connection to driving because when you are so much in control of the vehicle and you have never any doubt how to control which function in the vehicle, it makes you drive safer, sportier, with more fun, more enjoyment and less being annoyed by, wait a minute, where was this functioning and oh, and do I have to search deep in the menu? No, everything is here straightforward and that really brings back the focus just on driving. And getting off the autobahn is always a lot of fun as well look at that here and I can have such a high corner speed at the same time I'm being in perfect control of that this is a vehicle I really feel one with and now as comparison the Audi six-cylinder petrol That's yeah, over 180 kilometers an hour. Here, of course, a little bit more wind noise because this is here an S5 convertible. That's the way we can also test in Europe still this 3 liter V6 petrol in the Audi. And yeah, both have good punch, also the 3 to 6 liter diesel. But this, you know, just has this V6 petrol node and it's just more lively from the low RPM area. And yeah, that would actually be then cooler choice definitely and also then comparable to the M340i from the BMW. Yeah, it's it's just so much cooler hearing that sound and also knowing that this isn't fake at all. Now let's sum everything up for you. Which one would you take home? Tell me in the comments. And which one would I go for? It's really tough because, well, with the Audi, you have the best balance between sportiness and comfort. And you also have the most direct user interface. Controlling it while driving is easiest. Exterior and interior is on the one hand most conservative and it's also the oldest model in the test. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. In the EU, of course, with the diesel choice, I think that's not really appropriate. It's still a good and, you know, good performance engine, yes, but I would expect this six-cylinder petrol feeling then in this case. So in the US, it's definitely a great choice. And it's also a price choice because when you look at the concise prices, 84,000 euros, 92 and 97,000 euros for the Mercedes. So the Audi is, so to speak, the most affordable one. Of course, all are very expensive indeed. The BMW, one step further, more goes into a sporty direction already, but still has a good balance indeed. From the exterior, I like it best actually. Interior, since the facelift is of course a little bit more into the digital world, but still quite good to control and has of course a little bit more modern touch than the Audi. Then the Mercedes, surprisingly, it is the sportiest in the test from the overall sporty driving feeling because it has the stiffest suspension, especially in a sport setting. The steering is also quite sporty. However, the Audi steering feel is most natural, I have to say. But the Mercedes has this biggest gap between the normal Mercedes and the C43. Here with the normal 3 Series and the M Performance model, it's a little bit slimmer. And with the normal A4 and the S4, the margin is the slimmest, actually. But again, that's not a good or bad thing. It's just, you know, a different approach, a different strategy indeed. So I had most driving fun with the Mercedes, most engine fun from like the low frequency vibrations and so on with the BMW and best looks and most interior fun and most balanced out feeling for an everyday driving perspective with the Audi. 
So they all have this different focus and then the question is which one is most important to you. With the four cylinder in the Mercedes, the performance is there, no doubt about that. But again, these low frequency vibrations you somehow feel, this gut feeling, I think then here the six cylinder in the BMW just delivers you a little bit more. Which one would you take? Tell me in the comments. As for me personally, well, I had the most driving fun with the Mercedes. Indeed, that was super cool. And here in Europe, since I can only get the diesel for the Audi, it would be rather the BMW to get this six cylinder feeling indeed. Because yeah, in Europe, this is then the only six cylinder you can get as a six cylinder petrol. In the US, there's also the six cylinder for the Audi available. So probably I would go then for the Audi in the US. And also seating wise, for example, in the UK, I can also get the perforated sensor tech in the BMW. Whereas in Germany, I can also get the microfiber. Oh, if you guess here today, <laughs> the microfiber for the Mercedes, for example. So yeah, it's definitely a very, very tough choice. And the question is, if sportiness is the most important to you or more the balance between sportiness and comfort. Also check out the video of the non-performance versions of these vehicles or maybe also the Mercedes C63.